Okay, our reading today is in sec, uh, 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Let's bow in prayer before we start. Holy Father, we thank you for your holy word. Your word is truth. We thank you, Father, that we can uh, cling to it, Father, and study it. And uh, thou just give us the spiritual, deep spiritual uh, meaning of uh, parables and words and numbers, Father. Uh, the Holy Spirit um, guides us into all truth. Father, bless this time as we look into your word, read your word, uh, study it. Bless those that are hearing uh, that you may grant uh, wisdom and understanding to us. Father, as, that we can all grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Okay, 1 Thessalonians 5. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love for a helmet of uh, helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but rather follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God that, pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who will also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. <clears throat> okay, um, <clears throat> let's turn over to Revelation chapter 3. <clears throat> We're going to be looking at verse 3. <clears throat> and <clears throat> see what that has to say. <clears throat> And remember, uh, these churches, seven churches, are pictures uh, that we can uh, and uh, that we can expect to see that going on in the time of great tribulation in the churches. Um, they leave their first love, 
they're saying they're Jews and they're not, or they're saying they're apostles. So they're calling themselves believers or Christians, but they're not. Um, uh, Satan's seed is there. Uh, if, you, if you look at chapter 2 of Revelation, verse 13, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. And so uh, these, these people that are gone after false gospels, um, they're in the synagogue of Satan. It's, it says it there. Look at the last part of verse 9, chapter 2, verse 9. It says, uh, them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. And so there's people that uh, are lost, uh, and many of them uh, going after the teachings of uh, Balaam or um, uh, the Nicolaitans. So, and so, or Jezebel. And then we're seeing here in, in chapter three about Sardis that <clears throat> um, they're not they're dead that their church is dead there in verse one see so this is this is a picture of how all the churches will be but these are insights each of these churches um gives us insight into what to expect during great tribulation time and it says be watchful and strengthen the things which remain verse two there that are ready to die for i have not found thy works perfect before god Remember, therefore, now, uh, verse 3, how th thou has received and heard and hold fast and repent. So I want to let's look at that. <clears throat> that word hold fast, it means <clears throat> to guard <clears throat> or to detain. And the Lord tells us to hold fast. Uh, we just read uh, in Thessalonians to hold fast that which is good. Uh, the gospel is good. Christ is good. And to hold fast uh, that which is good. But these, these are not, uh, these people in Sardis um, are not. Uh, there's a few there we're going to see in verse 4, but most of them are not holding fast, see. And if, uh, <clears throat> let me show you something, how this, also, this word is also, uh, is uh, the word kept. Uh, go to John chapter 8. It's translated kept, this word hold fast. John chapter 8, look at verse 51. Uh, it's translated keep here. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, uh, he shall never see death. And there's that word, hold fast, <clears throat> okay? One more is in Jude, right before Revelation. Uh, look at verse 21. <clears throat> it's the word keep, uh, verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And so we hold fast. Or we keep Christ in us, uh, looking unto Jesus, author and finisher of our faith. And so he's saying, remember, therefore, how thou has received uh, and uh, heard and hold fast and repent. See? And so um, we know this word repent. It means to think differently. But uh, we know uh, from the language in the scriptures that they're not going to repent, see? Look at uh, chapter 2, look at verse 21 there. Revelation 2, 21. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not, see? And then I want to show you one more. Go over to chapter 9 of Revelation. Look at verse 20 and 21. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, 
nor their sorceries, nor their fornication, nor their thefts. So, and so uh, one more is in six, Revelation 16. So they're not going to repent. Uh, look at 16 verse 11 there. And blaspheme, well, let me, let's go with, uh, let me start with verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out of his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they yawed, nod their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. See? So you see, uh, the reason God has to grant you, you and I repentance, that's how somebody uh, becomes saved. If you go over to Luke 13, look at Luke 13, 3 in verse, and then in verse 5. It says, <clears throat> um, and I'll start with 2. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all Galileans, because they suffered such things? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye all shall likewise perish. And then he says it again in five. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Perish. And so um, uh, God has to grant us repentance. Um, the Bible says that. Look at chapter five. Look at verse 31. Acts uh, chapter 5, verse 31. <clears throat> Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Okay? To give repentance. God has to give you or grant you repentance. In uh, uh, also cha uh, Acts chapter 11, look at verse 18 there. <clears throat> Acts 11, look at 18. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. See? So God has to grant us repentance. He has to give it. You just don't repent. God has to grant that to you and, and uh, to repent. And remember that word in the Greek, it means to think differently. And so before we're saved, our mind is, of, is on sin and of this world. And now when we become a child of God, uh, now we have the mind of Christ, see? We think differently. We're in God's kingdom. <clears throat> Let me just show you one more. It's in Psalms 85. <clears throat> Look at verse 7. <clears throat> Psalms 85, verse 7. <clears throat> Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. Okay? And so when we when God grants us repentance, it's great. He's granting us salvation. Is, uh, it's the same. It's all uh, the work of God. Um, remember, the Bible says a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. So it starts in heaven, and that's... God grants repentance to every one of his elect and his sheep. And that's how uh, we're born of God. We're, um, we're a new creature in Christ. See, God, now uh, the Holy Spirit comes upon us. So go back to <clears throat> Revelation uh, 3. And, it's, and it says there, remember, therefore, how thou has received and heard. <clears throat> and he's saying, uh, remember the true gospel. And, and uh, uh, but they're not holding to the true gospel, say they're holding to the, the doctrines 
of Nicolaitans or the Jezebel's teaching, because it says in verse one, thou has a name <clears throat> that thou livest and are dead, see? And so <clears throat> it says, remember therefore now uh, how thou has received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Okay, so uh, what does that all that mean? <clears throat> that word watch, it's the same uh, Greek word in uh, verse 2. See, be watchful uh, in verse 2. It's the same uh, Greek word. It means to keep awake in the Greek. Uh, uh, spiritually, it's a picture of salvation, see, to keep awake. Uh, God has to awaken us um, out of spiritual sleep. Uh, go to John chapter 11. Uh, either uh, you're either you're spiritually asleep or spiritually dead. It's the same teaching, the same thing. <clears throat> but look at John chapter 11, verse 11. <clears throat> these things said he and after that he said unto them our friend Lazarus sleepeth but I go that I may awake him out of sleep see and then and then he just says in 14 uh, Jesus said unto them plainly Lazarus is dead so sleeping and dead spiritually means uh, uh, an unsaved person uh, God has to awake us out of sleep or raise us from the dead. That's why salvation is of the Lord. Okay. So um, to, <clears throat> to be not watching would be un being unsaved. You're not, you're not, you haven't been born of God. See? So <clears throat> when it says, if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. So if somebody is not watching uh, and not been uh, awake from spiritual sleep, God hasn't saved them, then uh, they're going to, uh, Christ is going to come upon them as a thief. And I'm going to bring out some scripture on that. But go to 1 Corinthians. Uh, this is uh, some words on watch. Go to 1 Corinthians 16. <clears throat> Look at verse 13. 1 <clears throat> Corinthians 16, <clears throat> look at verse 13 there. <clears throat> Watch ye, stand fast in, th in the faith. Quit you like men, be strong. See? Watch to keep awake. And of course, uh, Christ is in us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us when we're saved and we have eternal life. I'm just going to give you another verse. Go to Colossians chapter 4. <clears throat> Look at verse 2. <clears throat> Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. See? So, you have these verses, uh, which means to keep awake. <clears throat> and uh, we're right next to this. Uh, if, go to Ephesians chapter 5. Look at verse 14 there. <clears throat> Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepeth and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Now, we know from uh, the verses I just showed you in John 11, even though it says, Awake thou that sleepeth, uh, Christ has to go and, and he has to come to us and awake us up. Um, <clears throat> go to John 11 again. And so you can't save yourself. You can't do anything. God has to come to us because we're dead. We're spiritually asleep. And how can you do anything when you're dead? And so John chapter 11, 
Again, <clears throat> look at verse 11. So it, it says there, these things said he, and after that he said unto them, our friends, friend Lazarus sleepeth. I go, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. And so remember, God has to awaken us to be saved. He has to raise us up from the dead. So when you when you see that verse in, in Ephesians, wherefore he said, awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. <clears throat> Put John 11, 11 next to that verse, because it's it's saying there that the Lord has to, uh, does, uh, he's the one that awakes us out of sleep, see? So that salvation is of the Lord. So when it says here, watch, <clears throat> back in Revelation chapter 3, <clears throat> If uh, uh, re remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, <clears throat> remember that means to keep awake, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. <clears throat> okay, go to Matthew 24. And we'll start, look at verse 42 there. <clears throat> Matthew 24, look at verse 42. Okay, but know this, that if the good man of the house, <clears throat> well, who, who is the good man of the house? That word good man, in the Greek, it means dwelling. So, we could say the one dwelling in that house, that person's soul or spirit, the good men of the house, see? So that's anyone that's dwelling in their house, that person, uh, that person's spirit or that person's soul, see? And it says, uh, had, no, had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched it would not have su suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready for such an hour you think not the Son of Man cometh. Okay? And so uh, the one that's dwelling in that house, that individual soul or spirit, if, if that person uh, was watching, he would, he would not have his house to be broken up. See? But if he's not watching, uh, then he's going to have his house, which is, um, uh, see at the end of that verse, <clears throat> that he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. That broken up is a picture of uh, spiritual, um, eternal damnation, uh, the lake of fire to be broken, okay? And so um, it's uh, your house. And remember, your that person's soul or spirit. He would not. He would have not suffered his house to be broken. So it's teaching when Christ comes and those people that are dwelling in their house uh, that are not watching will have their house broken up. In other words, their house will. Uh, uh, they'll, ha they'll have to pay for their sins. They'll be, uh, it it's eternal damnation for that person that's not watching. Judgment upon this person, see? But the saved are watching, so their house isn't broken up, see? And so that's why in 44, it says, therefore be ye also ready. So if you're watching, you're ready. You're saved. For in such an hour, as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. So watching uh, would imply salvation. Your eyes are open. You've been raised. Uh, you're awake. And Christ is the one that wakes us up, see? And somebody that's not watching, then their house is going to be broken up, see? And all God's elect will be watching. They'll be ready, see? God's will wake each one of his elect up.
from their spiritual sleep or, or being dead, and that's salvation. Um, I want to show you another one. <clears throat> Go to 1 Thessalonians 5. We, we just read that this uh, for our reading. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5. <clears throat> look, at, look at verse 1 there. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they, this is those that are not saved within the external church. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape, see? They'll not escape judgment. Their house will be broken up. Now the contrast is verse four. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. See, these, other, these others that are not ready are in darkness. That that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness, see, like the other ones in verse three. Okay, the external church, those that are not saved, these are the ones that are dead. These are spiritually dead. These are the ones that hold to the doctrines of uh, false doctrine, false gospels. And, and they're saying they're believers or Christians or they're children of God, but they're dead. See, they're not ready. They're, they're, they're not watching. Uh, look at verse five. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. That would be Satan's dominion. See, these people that are in, not, in the night or the darkness are in Satan's dominion. They're not watching. They're spiritually dead or asleep. Verse six, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. See? Uh, now, you, like I said, you have language, let us watch, but the Lord has to give us, uh, he has to awaken us. He has to um, come to us and, and raise us out of the dead like Lazarus, raise us up. Look at verse seven, for they that sleep, sleep in the night. See, see how it all fits when you understand the spiritual teaching. Uh, sleeping is uh, being spiritually dead. And where are they gonna, uh, they're sleeping in the night, Satan's dominion. And they that be drunken, same, same teaching, drunken with false gospels are drunken in the night, Satan's dom uh, dominion, see. Now the contrast, eight, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. See, we're appointed to salvation. We're predestinated to salvation and God wakens us up from sleep or being spiritually dead. See, so God had not appointed us to wrath like these others that are sleeping and they're not watching, they're in the night, they're in Satan's dominion. See, they're under the wrath of God, They'll how, their house will be broken up. But to obtain salvation, by our Lord Jesus Christ in verse nine there. So God, he predestinates those uh, before the foundation of the world. He appoints eternal life to us. We're the ones, the sheep are the ones that are, uh, that are gonna be, uh, have eternal life. Uh, go to John chapter 10. Look at verse, um, let me get the, get over there. John chapter 10. <clears throat> He's talking about the sheep. Uh, first, we know, we know that in um, 
in John chapter 10 and verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So it's really clear who Christ died for. It, it says it right there. He giveth his life for the sheep. The sheep are the elect, the church, his saints. Um, each one of us that are written in the book of life before the foundation of the world. And now, um, now look at verse 27 and 28, John chapter 10. 27 and 28. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. So it's clear that the, the ones that are going to have eternal life are the sheep. I give unto them eternal life. They're the ones that are going to have eternal life. The sheep, the elect. It's, it says it right there. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So you see how um, uh, the sheep, God's elect, every one of his sheep will be saved uh before the end of time everyone that's his hundred sheep and uh like it says in luke 15 what man having a hundred sheep and uh he goes and finds go over to luke chapter 10. <clears throat> so he gives eternal life to his sheep and those are the ones that uh have eternal life the sheep the church his elect but look at uh Luke 15, look at, uh, look at verse 3, and he spake this parable unto them, saying, what man of you having a hundred sheep, so the man there would be the Lord Jesus Christ, and the, the sheep would be his elect, uh, the hundred, why a hundred, that would be the completeness of his sheep, or the, the completeness of his elect. If he lose one of them, that would be each one of us that the Lord finds. See, each one of us, the Son of Man comes to seek and save that which is lost. So he says, if if one of them, um, if he lose one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. See, every one of God's lost sheep will be found. And, and uh, that means uh, when the last one is found, spiritually, he has his complete hundred sheep. In other words, every one of his uh, sheep have been found, have been saved. And then in verse five, and when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing spiritually. That means he's taken the weight uh, upon his shoulders, our sins, he's taken his weight, are the sins of his sheep upon his shoulders, the weight uh, of, of the sheep. Uh, so that's that takes, uh, it's a spiritual picture here of the Lord Jesus taking upon our sins. He, he takes it and puts it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, rejoice with me, for I found my sheep, which was lost. See, each one of those sheep that were lost are a picture of God's elect. And, and he says right there uh, uh, in verse four, is at the end of verse four, and go after that which is lost until he find it. See, and so, uh, and he's going to find every one of those lost sheep. And that's what the, uh, the the Bible teaches, see, and um, uh, go to Luke 19, Luke chapter 19, look at verse 10 there, Luke 19, verse 10, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost, and so uh, you might find uh, that you might have gotten saved early in life, and maybe uh, as a teenager, maybe later on in life, um, it depends according to God's good timing. That's when he's, he, you're found. He's found his lost sheep 
And it's God's timing when we become saved. See, um, like he told Zacchaeus, today I must abide in thy house. And that was the day Zacchaeus became saved. So um, we get saved by the word of God. Somebody witnesses uh, to you. Somebody buys you a Bible. You start reading the word. Um, uh, you get invited to uh, fellowship. You hear the gospel. You hear the word. And God opens up your understanding to the truth. And uh, these are ways that the Lord is drawing you uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Father is drawing us. And uh, it's a miracle. There's so many people in this world, and yet uh, God knows his sheep, that, and he goes and finds those lost sheep. And by uh, the gospel going forth, those sheep come in, into salvation, and they become, uh, they're watching now, see? They're alert, they're ready. They've been saved. They've been granted repentance. So when you get saved, it's a, it's a miracle. And uh, we give all the glory to the Lord uh, because there's people going to be in hell because it says those that are not ready, their house is going to be broken up. And, and uh, uh, if you understand spiritual uh, teaching and language, that's teaching eternal damnation if your house is broken up. And so those that are saved, their houses are not broken up. And that means they have eternal life. And remember the verse in John, I give them eternal life, those sheep. And so each of us uh, have eternal life that are saved. Okay, so that um, I want to go over to verse four now, chapter Revelation three, and look at verse four. So uh, we, we already seen that, um, that uh, the ones... Uh, at the end of verse three, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. And these are people that are not watching. They're not ready. Okay. And that's why it says, thou shalt not know what hour they haven't been saved. See, now it goes right into verse four. Thou has a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. Okay, now, uh, when God uses that word few, it, it means uh, little or small. Let me just show you uh, the, the Bible, what the Bible teaches about when he uses few. It points to his sheep. It points to the elect. Uh, let's start in Deuteronomy. Look at Deuteronomy 7, 6 through 9. Deuteronomy 7, look at verse 6, 6 through 9. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. See that? The sheep are special people. They've been chosen. All through the Bible we have uh, that God does the choosing. He's the one that has chose us before the foundation of the world. Look at verse 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all people. See? So the elect are the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers, had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know, therefore, that the Lord thy God, it, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandment to a thousand generations. So you see here how um, uh, God chooses us. And we're the fewest uh, people, uh, of, of, and for you, we're the fewest of all people, see? And so you'll see all the way through the Bible when we see the word few, uh, uh, it points to the elect. And, uh, and so we know right there in, in verse um, uh, 
Um, uh, let's see where it says few is that. What verse was that? Seven. Okay. Um, and so that uh, let's go to another verse. Let's go to Psalms 105. Look at Psalms 105, 9 through 15 now. We're looking at uh, the word few or fewest. Look at um, Psalms 105, 9 through 15. Which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant saying unto thee, will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance? When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it, see? And so uh, it's real clear as we let the Bible uh, interpret itself on words uh, that it points to the elect. It points to those whom the Lord chooses, see? And we know we're chosen before the foundation of the world in Christ. Uh, go over to Ecclesiastes, right after Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. <clears throat> Look at chapter 9. This again is a little parable, but <clears throat> when we work with it, we can see uh, uh, what, what God's teaching here as we look at the spiritual teaching. Look at uh, chapter 9. And I'm going to read um, 13 through 16. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemeth great unto me. <clears throat> okay, 14. There was a little city and few men within it. Okay, so who would that little city be a picture of? <clears throat> be a church. The, the little city and few men within would be God's kingdom, God's church, see? Uh, the li little city, few and little uh, would go hand in hand and a <clears throat> few men within it, okay? So we can see that the little city and few men point to the elect, to believers, to his sheep. And there came a great king against it, who would be that great king? Satan. He comes against the church. He comes against Christ, say, and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it, say. And now verse 15. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. Who would that be? The Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to the language. And he, by his wisdom, delivered the city, see, by the gospel of Christ. Jesus is the power and the wisdom of God. And, and he, he, by his wisdom, delivered the city, yet no man remembered that same poor man, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, see? And his words are not heard. And this is uh, even as more so today, when you witness to people, they don't want, they don't want anything to do with the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the gospel of Christ. Uh, they'll change the subject. They'll wanna speak about, talk about something else, worldly things. But when you start talking about the Bible or the, uh, the wisdom that Christ ha gives us in the word, uh, they don't want it. They despise it, see? And, and remember what Jesus says, that he that despises you despises me. And so <clears throat> um, uh, this, is, this is a little parable, but you see how clear it is when we see the spiritual teaching. But there again is that word few in verse 14. A little city, few men in it. That would be the believers, those that he has chosen. Okay. And so um, let's go to one more in Matthew. Look at Matthew um, uh, 22. Look at verse 14. 
<clears throat> it says 2214, many are called, but few are chosen. See? And so you witness to people to come to call, uh, you call them to the marriage feast and they have excuses. You might, you might ask them to come to fellowship and they have excuses. I can't make it because uh, I've got something else doing or I've got this planned or that. And so there's people that make excuses when it comes to uh, when you witness uh, the Bible, witness the words of that poor wise man, the gospel, see? And so we call them and, and uh, uh, many are called, see? But few are chosen. And those few would be the elect. There's those that the Lord will uh, grant repentance and bring them into the kingdom of God. But to the others that are called and they uh, don't want Christ to reign over them. Uh, and they went, look at verse up in 22, uh, look at verse five. Um, I'll start with verse four. Again, he sent forth other servants saying, tell them what you're bidden. Behold, I have prepared uh, my oxen and my fatlings are killed uh, and all things are ready. Come on to the marriage. And they made light of it. And see that word light in the Greek? It means uh, to have no regard, to neglect, to, to, care, to, uh, to be careless. So they could care less of being invited to the marriage feast, see? They made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And so this is the nature of man. They love darkness rather than light. They don't want Christ to reign over them, see? And so they're being called, and yet um, uh, they're being called here, and, and yet they, they disregard it. See, they have no regard. They neglect. And this is the nature of man. Men love darkness rather than light, see? And so many are called but few are chosen. Those, would, those few are the God's sheep, are God's elect, okay? And so go back to Revelation. Um, you could see all through the Bible how God uses that few. And then, and then we see here in, in Revelation uh, 3 that um, he says, I have a, thou has a few names, even in Sardis, now we know from the word few that it's it's uh, that God's sheep, God's elect, and look at look what He says about it. Uh, that was a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. See, now this word defiled it means uh, to soil. Um, it, it's 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 derived uh, from a, another Greek word that's translated black. And it, it, it's, it's only used three times in the New Testament. L let me just show you the three times it's used. Go to Matthew chapter 5. <clears throat> Look at verse 36. Matthew 5, 36. <clears throat> okay, Matthew 5, 36. It says... Neither shall thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. Now, there it's saying if if your if your hair is white, of course that would imply right Christ righteousness salvation. If it's black, that person is not saved. It would be a, a spiritually we're talking spiritual language here now for white and for black. Spiritually, white implies Christ's righteousness, holiness, pure. Uh, this would be someone saved. Black would, would be those that are in Satan's dominion, uh, in their sins, see? And so um, this, this word defiled is derived from that word in the Greek that means black. Uh, so it's, it's used once there. And then over Revelation, it's used... Uh, two times. It's only used three times in the New Testament, that word. 
look at uh, Revelation chapter 6. It's used in verse 5 and verse 12. <clears throat> when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in, it, in his hands. So we know when it's a black horse from the, from the word spiritually, from the other words, uh, how, how it's used, that this horse would be uh, of Satan, see, this black horse. And then look at verse uh, 12. <clears throat> And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. So black as sackcloth of hair, again, darkness, sin, and great earthquake take in the great tribulation period. The light, uh, the sun, the light of the gospel, the light of the sun is now darkened, see? And during the Great Tribulation, uh, you have a, a, um, false prophets that are showing great signs and wonders that are that are bringing forth. They're the darkness, see. And so, because of that, the light of the gospel is is uh, uh, is silenced or is um, is darkened because of these false prophets. And one last one is in Proverbs seven. Go to Proverbs seven. This, see how this word dark or black is used. <clears throat> Look at Proverbs 7. It talks about that strange woman, which is the false church. And look at verse 5. That they may keep thee from the strange woman. See? <clears throat> uh, what keeps us from the strange woman? Woman. The commandments. Look at verse 1. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live, see? The word of God will keep us from the false prophet, from the false church, which is the strange woman, see? From the stranger, uh, which flattereth with her words, that's false gospels that come forth. For out of the window of my house, I looked through my casement and beheld the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. See, that's how you're going to get snared into a false gospel when you don't have any understanding of what the Bible teaches. See, that you're, you're open prey for the false church, for false prophets. And, uh, and so, but we, can, we know that the Lord will bring all his lost sheep into God's kingdom and uh, and uh, under the sound of the true gospel. But for those that are not in the book of life, they're like this young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner, the false gospels, the false church. And he went the way of her house, see? Satan's dominion. Uh, uh, her house is hell, it says here. Uh, look, look over to the very last verse of Proverbs 7, 27. Her house is the way of he to hell, going down to the chambers of death, see? So anybody that gets snared into a false gospel, they're headed to hell. Now look at, ver back in chapter seven, look at verse nine. Uh, uh, he went to the way of her house in the twilight, in the evening, and the black and dark night, see? All those words implying Satan's dominion, twilight, dark, black, see? And this is what Satan is. He, he, uh, he blinds you. He brings you into his house, which is headed to hell, see? And that's why uh, the Lord says, uh, many are called, but few are chosen. And so uh, we know that... Um, the sheep, uh, God's sheep, all his sheep will be saved before the end of time. And uh, um, you just, you, you'll come into uh, the, uh, the, under the sound of the true gospel. God will open up your understanding 
to see the truths of his word and, and the doctrines. And this is the work of the Lord. He's He's bring opening your understanding to see these things, see? And not everybody sees the doctrines of the Bible about predestination, who Christ died for, um, the great tribulation. Um, God has to open up your understanding to these things. They're the mysteries, okay? I'm not going to be able to finish um, uh, this verse. So Lord willing, next week we'll pick it up uh, in verse four.